Hello and welcome to Zach103 TV. Today we are racing Watkins Glen. On our last season we had one great race there and one uh, not so great race here at the, uh, what would be a good name for this track? The New York something, uh, probably the New York um, Twister, I guess you would call it. The New York Twister tongue tie. I don't know. Probably someone's got a good name for it. But regardless, just me in the booth this time. No one decided to join. So, Watkins Glen starting to pull Lethal Mourner. Uh, first poll. I can't really think of any polls he's got on the top of my head. Last season. Um, I know this season he can really use his poll. He's currently 32nd in standings. And to no one's surprise, doesn't have a pull yet this season. Points leader, on the other hand, Jeff Jordan, won last week at Dodge Motor Drum after the race was postponed, if you would, after the pace car had some shenanigans going on. So, he start, I think he started inside the top 15. Not a bad starting position. I mean, last year we seen uh, Roach had a very bad crash here last year. That was crazy. Last season's race here was absolutely insane. I did tone it down a bit. And mainly just the AI difficulty down to 105% as opposed to anything higher than that. And the weather's also different with a set weather for most of the races now. And it's also a longer race. 27 laps. I don't know if that's going to be going to be a fuel start or anything. But I do know if we go green, it'll allow for some spread out racing. So, no, you know the rules on cautions where, of course, there's only flips or crashes that are pretty bad that would normally th throw a yellow. I'll pretty much pass the judgment on that. But uh, 41 cars in this field. Uh, to re-rack the order of part-time drivers, I figured I'd just make one for this week, and then we'll go back to doing two, two week by week. So, uh, Ian Stiles is going to be the part-time driver for this race. Uh, he's starting mid-pack, so we'll see how that goes. But again, as I said, Gift Jordan, your points leader after last week. Uh, we know Gar Salamander finished second after leading and starting pole. Um, Gar Salamander not faring as well in standings, but eh, no, I'll actually take that back. He's actually 11th in the standings. Now I look a little closer, but um, yeah, 75 back. Close in standings, Sean Ard only 7 points back. In standings with his two wins, uh, one with Hillside and the uh, Jazz 500. And then behind him, I believe, is Kirk area. No, he's starting right up here too. So very consistent starting positions for some of these guys up front in standings, which is very interesting to note. Could have some dominance in the season per se. Then two oh, wick rear. Start your engines. Oh, my bad, forgot the engines are getting started. But yep, engines are getting started. Uh, Lethal Mortar gonna lead us to the green here. 27 laps. Hopefully, most under green. Don't see anything on our chat bar. Should be good to go. Bradley Reeves starting on the outside. I uh, believe he hasn't won since Indianapolis Road Course last season. Will be interesting thing to take note of. Trump Chicken year one, and I believe that's Lyle Toledo starting there in fourth. Let's play starting Sean Ard. We're just talking about him being second in points, seven points back. Coming on for that final corner, we've got Bradley Ream, a lethal mourner, is going to lead us to the green here. A green flag in the air here at Watkins Glen. Already, Drummer Chick 81 trying to take the lead. Keep an eye on our chat button to make sure we keep an eye on when and when not to throw a yellow if we need to. And Drummer Chick 81 clears for the lead. One last season, I believe that was Atlanta. And they're also the uh, third and fourth and standings, my bad. 
36 points back, so there's a chance they may not. If they do try to regain the points lead, they might not retake it in this race, even if they do lead the entirety of it. So that's just a lot of defining factors for sure. Also keep an eye on our standings towards the back of the pack just to make sure no one's having any issues. As we already have an overtake trying to retake the lead. Lethal Mortar here down in turn one. From Chickadee, we're going to lead lap one. However, Lethal Mortar is going to try to retake the lead here. He has not sh had really any success here other than Darlington, his rookie season, I believe. Uh, for Lethal Mortar, that's really the only thing to say about him. However, he's trying to turn that around, him and Shy Bracing. They're kind of on a downward trend past couple seasons. We're going side by side down here in the bus stop. Bradley Ream lurking behind, trying to see if he can make a move as well. Like, uh, German Chicken One is going to keep the lead after a good strong run off the corners. We may have a car with damage. It's the 51 of Yoiko. We'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. See if we need to throw a yellow or anything. I think it's just one car, I would imagine not. Not seeing any reason in particular they would have went to pit road, but nonetheless they did. I, I can't really see it being a strategy call unless I plan on saving one lap of fuel to the end, which they didn't even complete the one lap. Well, they hardly completed one lap, so... I don't really see this being a successful call for that 51 team if they're trying to pull a strategy call, but who knows, long race, 27 laps, a lot can happen. It looks like uh, Bradley Ream has overtaken Lethal Mortar for second place. I believe this field will get a little bit more strung out as the race goes on if we keep this green, which uh, hasn't happened, I don't believe, since 2022. We didn't have any green flag races at all last season. at this track. Now green, I'm not 100% sure if 2022 went all green either. Because uh, my memory of that, wait, no, take that back. I remember it wasn't green. I, I remember specifically there being wrecks. So maybe 2021 at best, but even then my memories, I'm just going off memory here. So do with that information what you will. As Bradley Ream now going to try to get around German Chickadee one here down in turn one. Quite have as much edge. He's going to try to over, out break the 81 car, but the 81 is going to try to have the run off the corner. Lethal Mortar there as well. Has a little bit of a slight edge right now. Let's see if that sticks. And it looks like. Uh, I don't know how much room they give here. Bradley Ream has taken the lead from German Chick 81 here on lap 4 at Watkins Glen. And is Lethal Mortar going to try to take advantage of that? Oh, gets chopped the nose off by the 81. Or the nose, yeah, you get what I'm saying. We'll keep our little standings up there showing the back just in case we have any wrecks or anything that I miss. But so far, so clean. Yeah, the stack ups were, I guess uh, right now tires aren't wearing as much, so feels not spreading out so much right now, which I'm a little surprised at to be fair. As German Chicken once again, they may be going back and forth here for position at this point. Is Lethal Mortar going to try to take advantage of that? That's going to disallow the 6 from getting a good run off the corner, allow the 81 to pull away and retake the spot. Potentially that 27. May either get overtaken or overtake the six here on the bus stop. We'll see how that fares. There's Lyle Toledo in the 53. Looks like Lyle's going to be able to take the third spot from Lethal. After he was uh, leading a few laps ago. It's Sean Art also still up here in the top five. And Jacob Chandler is just, just outside of it. And you remember Barney Thresher III got four wins last season. Don't sleep on him either. A lot of good drivers just outside the top five right now, to be fair. Might have a... Just trying to keep a front. Make sure there's no overtakes trying to go on, but Sean Arn peaked a little bit there to maybe get around for 
fourth, but side against it as uh, got some passing here. Dripsy Scheib right now battling for tenth with the 55 as Zevil, or actually uh, for, for ninth rather as uh, Reggie Fogelman. Oh, they touch the three and the 55. Reggie Fogelman and Zevil. That could have been very nasty there. Unfortunately, uh, fortunately, Reggie able to keep it going. Uh, but that's going to allow points leader Geff Jordan to take a little bit of an edge there. You see Joy Paints, another car that won four races last season, trying to take advantage as well, and will, both cars. Um, we'll get around Reggie. Well, Reggie's going to try to go on the inside here on the 77. Looks like 77 is going to have the run on the outside, perhaps. You got Cody go forth and not a wee behind that as well, trying to do something. The battle for, I think at this point, it's 13th or 14th. I think Joy Paints will finally clear for that spot. I'm not sure which one it is, but it is a spot nonetheless. That's uh, be 13th. So Reggie went from 11th to 13th there that time around. Let's go back to the front. I believe the 81 was leading last time we checked. Um, she's still leading. German Chick 81. And then Bradley Ream, Lyle Toledo still in third. We were just talking about that pull away. So he's seen three cars pull away now. Lethal Mourner still holding up in fourth. But Sean Ard, I think, is noticing that. And he wants to try and get himself in a good position. But backfires. Jacob Shangle on the 64 is going to go around him after a good run off the bus stop. Shangle's been a sleeper past couple this is the second season hasn't really shown anything well take that back I think he did get a win somewhere I know he's gotten a couple pole positions he has he's shown quite a bit of speed just hasn't quite had consistency I guess would be the right word overall but right now we're in top five so can't shake that as we may have another pass for the lead and it looks like it's gonna be these two battling this entire race at this point we're in only lap 8 on 27. This is a long race. It looks like uh, Yorko caught up about a tenth that time, which that's not going to really help you much, but all things considered, could be worse for that 51 team. Considering they did not even finish this race last year, I don't think they finished either of the races at this track last year. As uh, the pass by the six was successful, Lyle Toledo still holding on the third. Looks like that 27 just appears to be that car that is not quite up to par with that front little group right now. And one could question: Is he holding up the rest of the field? Well. Depends on what they're going to do here. It looks like Jacob Shangle has ran out of patience in that 64 Sylvania Dodge. He's going to try to go here for third as Lyle Toledo, or pardon me, fourth. Is Lyle Toledo going to go for second? Two battles going on. And Toledo will clear for second. Shangle still work. Actually, take that back. Toledo did not clear for second. And Toledo's, or uh, Shingle's still working on it, but I think Sean's got to run on the bottom here, and that's going to allow the 64 to clear for now. And the 53 is still battling with the 81 for second. See how that battle filler, filters out. It looks like the 81 is going to be successful there. 27 hold up a good fight here for fourth with the 64. Of Jacob Shingle. They're still battling. They've been side by side for almost a whole lap now. Still side by side. Toledo going to go for another move there. Thrasher is going to go try to get inside the top six, perhaps underneath Sean Ard. Dripsy is all as well trying something. Very good battle here for fourth. They've been side by side for the whole lap and may be two laps here, but it looks like 64 will finally clear. Let's see how the 53 is faring. And uh, it looks like they might finally clear the 81 for second. 
And a lack, look at the la allowed the six of Bradley Ream to pull away quite a bit here. I remember Brandon Thrasher, he was actually successful in getting around Sean Ard. But he's in sixth now. Not exactly a uh, road course racer, I would say, but um, here he is running inside the top 10. Showing a lot of signs of, of speed, what he had last season. Granted, new team, self ran, so new, new stuff to deal with. So, we're going to be a lot of stuff to see there. Is German Chick 81 again going to try to get around that 80 th or 53 for second? And it looks like, uh, ooh, they're still battling here. Jacob Shangle slowly catching up. We were talking about that 27 maybe holding them up, but it looks like uh, Jacob Shangle is starting to catch up to these guys, so that may be correct for that 27. We know they haven't really had any pay, raw pace. I know Frank Shilton, he's good at that. He's actually in the top 10 right now in that four car. But uh, it's still battling side by side for a second here. That's going to allow 64, and I think the 27 got a good run there as well. To catch up. Yeah, this 27 could still get used a really good run here. Despite not really having that raw pace. So they're going to try to just play the blocking game at this point. Still a good value for second. But I think the 53 will still hold on to it at this point. We'll see if Doug Shangle tries anything here. Or if anyone else for that matter. Looks like everyone's patient. See Zevil in the back trying to make a move. This is for... I believe it's for uh, he's still battling with Dripsy in the top ten. I think this is for tenth. Could be wrong. You see Reggie Fogelman behind that trying to make something happen as well. He, he fell back a few spots with Frank Chilton up there in eighth. But yeah, Reggie Fogelman still trying to reel back some spots. Just outside the top ten right now in that three Andy's frozen custard. Chevrolet. You see Zevil here. He's going to get cleared by the 54 for uh, ninth, So he's still 10th. Joy Payne's just outside the top 10 and 11th. And just gaps between the field at this point. You see Kazo leading another uh, piece of the field in 17th. That's another slice of the pie. That is Watkins Glen. Back to the leader. Uh, Bradley Ream has definitely shown to be a little bit more dominant right now. You see just it's almost like the four cars are just kinda in a line. They're kinda stuck behind each they're not really stuck behind each other, but they're just kinda crazy as it sounds, they're equal in speed, which you know they are, so eh, yeah. Not a bad race so far, though. Good passing, good racing. About what we wanted. Jacob Shingle peaked there a little bit and decided against it. Or actually, he might have got chopped off a little bit. We'll see. Actually, we won't see. We already know, but eh. Watkins Glen. Bus stop entry. The nose was stuck, but it did not stick. Six still pulling away. Lyle Toledo not exactly pulling from the 81 much. However, not little either. We gotta talk about Lyle Toledo here. This is the best run they've had in this in the Cup Series. I don't think they've even had a good running uh, NC CRS or take that back Smos this well. And here they are running second at Watkins Glen and the CCS. So uh, you know how some people are just better with different cars and the Cup car. I think seems to be more of their feng shui. That 53 team for backstretch crowds racing team. Another new team as well. So. Very good run for them today. Started third, currently second. Granted, they got German Chick 81 all over the back of them. German Chick had a really good run through the S's there. If, I, if I'm calling that track point correctly. Great run in the bus stop. But unfortunately, it looks like uh, Jacob Shangle is actually going to take advantage of it. Possibly get around the 81. If anyone's got the run on the bottom. It's going to be hard to say. 
This is for fourth, or no, take that back third, and it looks like 64 is going to clear. They've, they've been having a really good race, too, the 64 team. It's just been Bradley Ream ever since that battle between 53 and the 81 originally started, and no one's had anything for it, and I think we're about a little, we're past halfway at this point, so do with that information what you will. Question is, will we have to pit? The answer, I'm not sure. Really something. Was this the second one of 3 to 400? If it was, a long race makes sense. But uh, unfortunately, I missed opportunity on pit stops. Oh well. If it is, so be it. I'll just add it to the sticker. We'll call it the second one of 3 to 400. Even though we're in the middle of the race, and I just realized. Even if that is the case, I'm not sure if it is or not. Do I still do named races? Alright, I do. No, this is not the Zach 100. You go back to Watkins Glen, race 13, just a few races. I don't know why. Oh, I, I wasn't even paying attention. Jacob Chandler around um, Lyle Salido for a second. That's interesting. So, two Dodges leading up front here. Not Team Maze. got Real Fame Nerd Sports versus Roach Rare E Racing right now. I'll see if Jacob can reel in the six. Seems to be the faster of these guys right now, and it looks like Toledo is starting to show a little bit more speed than the 81, and Thrasher also still up here. Don't sleep on him too much either. But yeah, our next crown jewel is Watkins Glen again, race 13, five races from now, so I guess we'll be returning to the New York um, Forest or whatever. I can think of a good name for it, but I can't at the moment. But anyway, for that, uh, we don't do a lot of named races, but we got a few of them. I think we'll do a longer race, Charlotte. It's kind of a, it's not quite a crown jewel, but it's, it's a named race, so we'll we'll do a longer one for that. And that's race 12, race before the Zach 1 3 400. So it'll be something to see. But yeah, green so far. Longest green flag run I can see. Well, take that back. I'm not. I don't quite recall how long the race was last season or last year's Zach going through to be 400, but it was definitely something. Barney Thresher third going to try to make a move here for I believe that's going to be fifth place on Lethal Mourner. Is he has not gained a lot of spots that 27 car. Uh, kind of only really been losing spots, especially as this run's gone on. Kind of had more of a short run car it seemed like, or maybe they just. These cars behind them had a sh long run car, and they are taking full advantage right now. As lethal or Sean Ard may try to take a piece of that pie as well on that 27. We'll see how successful that is. Unsuccessful by Sean Ard, but Barney Thresher III is going to be able to get to fifth, and uh, Lethal Mourner out on the sixth, still holding on to the top ten right now. The entire top 10 is kind of in a solidified position right now via time. Uh, Zevil, I know he got a top 10 last week, so he can use another top 10 this week. Is not doing too great in standings. Or, well, let me see, where is he at in standings? Uh, he is 21st in standings. I know that don't sound too bad, so eh, I'm not, not horrible. Wouldn't complain. I know he won. The fall race here last year it was his first ever cup win. So, returning here, uh, we're in top 10. Pretty good run today. Uh, he may try to grab some more, but right now it looks like he's kind of just trying to hold on to this, uh, per se, draft of sort of this pack. And you got Joy Paints and Geff George. Geff, Geff Jordan. I'm getting mixed up with the Fox 25 meteorologist there. Um, right there in 12th, so be interesting. How that goes. Let's go back to Jacob Shangle, see if he's caught up to six and he, eh. Cut it down to less, oh, less than a second. We'll see if that holds up any. I just kind of want to keep an eye on their time. I know, ticker, y'all can see the ticker. I can't, so I'm going to have to go look at our little side standings here to get an idea of time gained, if any. 
Our, oh, gained about a little bit more there. We'll see if we got a battle going here. But fifth place, Barton starts to third is not up here in the top four in terms of track position. That's interesting. We'll see if the 64 can reel on the six any. Less than 10 laps to go. It'll be five to go lap 23, I think. Let's cross the line, finish lap 23. Could be wrong. And uh, another note, Yoiko, uh, they've just kind of been, they've not really gained or lost any time. That 51 car has kind of been strutting around. They may have just had an issue or something on lap one. I'm just curious, though. What, what, what is it that their issue was? And I'm not really seeing anything. It looks like they just took the tires and called it. I can't really think of any specific reason why they would pit, but they did. Oh, random six flame. He's turn twenty second. Not great. Not a horrible day, but man, not great so far. We'll see if they can improve on that. What, what I wanted to do was go to their teammate Jacob Changle. See if he caught up any. Um, in fact, he did. Put it down by th three tenths of a second there. We may have battle for the lead before this thing's said and done. If I remember right, I think he was a contender at one of the Watkins Glen races we had last season, but my memory's a little, little bit old, so, or I wouldn't say old, but it's scuffed, probably the good word to say about that. Yeah, he's right there with a the six car. He could make a move for the lead soon. Six cars look dominant all day. Jacob Shangle's trying to spoil the party. Try to get himself a win, I think. I can't remember if he got any wins last season, but if he didn't, this would be his first win. If he is able to get it going here. Down another tenth there. Well, granted, he gained two tenths that last time, but this time only a tenth. But he's right there behind that six. Makes you wonder if that six used up their stuff or maybe the 64 saved it up. Maybe it's a skill difference, a long run, short run, a lot can factor into it. I think it's solidified that uh, Bradley Ream will probably get most laps led, which is a 10 point bonus, which is good for him. He could use it. He's uh, currently not even inside the top 30 in standings. Okay, we're, we're, no, 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 take that back, take that back. Where is he? 30th in standings. So he's, yeah, not having a great season so far. That six car, but we'll see if he can hold up to the top five. I think I think he's got an easy podium here if he just keeps it clean to the end. But 64 trying to work him out, see what they can do to get around him. We've seen most passes organized here on the front straight and down into turn one. Uh, I don't think he's close enough yet. Kind of lost some time that that round, or no, stayed the same actually. But uh, they're going to eventually try something. Just got to time it right. Otherwise, you're going to lose time and that's going to be rough. But uh, regard on the other side of that coin, if you aren't try it soon enough, you may not be able to pass at all. Jeff Jordan caught up to Zevil for 11th right now. And it, Reggie Fogelman getting around Joy Paints back there in the back, noticing that in the bus stop, but still keeping a decently close eye here on the lead, battle for the lead. Close has been in quite a few laps, so see how that goes. And Green, I'm not sure if they have to pit or not. I, I don't think they do at this rate, but still an interesting thing to take note of. Oh, here he is. Here he is. Is he going to try to move? He's got the position. I just didn't make the move. Really thought about it, but didn't. He's trying to work him out. Oh, right on that bumper. Almost. I think he just needs to cut it off down to less than a tenth. I think he'll probably make a move. Or maybe at least a tenth. Trying to work a good timing out. 
Again, like I said, if you time it too late, you may not be able to get it done. Time too early, you may screw yourself. As all this is happening, Lyle Toledo and Drum Chiggity One slowly reeling in these two. Is they're not really battling either. So this would really just be Riley Ream slowing up as the run goes. Take a look at his times compared to the beginning. He's, I imagine he was, his left time's fall about, about 108.7s, so he's running 108.8. So he's about a, about a tenth off right now at the moment. Again, I don't think the 64 is close enough to try anything. Maybe not as aggressive. Being patient, waiting on that move, maybe waiting to the last lap. But again, if they wait too long, here comes Lyle Toledo. They've reeled in that gap a ton. That 53 and the 81. 59, I think, all, I think that's all she wrote for right now. We're coming up on two to go this time around. If you wait too long, it may be too late. I don't like this move here. He waited too long. He's going to try it on the bus stop. We haven't seen this be successful at all, so... Six is going to run him wide. That's exactly what I expected. However, holds on to him. Fortunately, that, that may be all she wrote. I know that sounds like crazy. Yeah, he's still there, but... If he don't make a move, while Toledo would be like, Alright, I'm running out of patience. I want to get my first win in my first season here at Watkins Glen. So we'll see who's going to make the move or not. But someone's going to have to here sooner or later. Still doesn't make it in one. Gain time. Has the time there. Right in the bus stop last time around. It was not successful. He's allowing Barney Thresher to reel him in just a little bit. I think he's cut some time there on his side. Six car is not faster than the 64 right now. They used up their stuff. Been waiting quite a while here. Quite a, couple, quite a few laps. Question is, do they wait too long? I don't really see any aggressive blocks this race either. Regardless, I think the grill's sizzling up. Take that back. It's two to go this time by. Not next. Not that last time when I said two to go this time. Time is running out. Jacob Shangle lost some time there. He may have waited too long. Yeah, doesn't quite have as much run to the six as he had. However, we'll see if he's trying something different here. Again, coming to the white flag this time around. He's only got a few more chances to make it happen. If he waits too long, it'll be too late. He may have already waited too long. Here it goes. White flag in the air. Bradley Ream leading. Still, the 64 was... I don't think it's going to be able to make a move here. One lap to go. Four cars pull away from the top five. Not a single caution this race. Everyone also finishing inside the lead lap at this rate. Bradley Raymond, uh, the 64, waited too long to make the move. And unfortunately, they lost a little bit of time, and now the six car has the advantage. Bradley Ream. He's got a few more corners left as he slowly pulled away from the 64 there. Top 5 I think is solidified at this point. Unless something happens. Pit stops were not a factor as I was 
in the shadows thinking what if but nope Bradley Ream he's got one more corner and Bradley Ream coming off a turn whatever that corner is after about a year winless streak I think if I'm not mistaken he's gonna win here Watkins Glen what could have been for Jacob Shangle waited too long to make the move and when he did make it, it didn't work. Rookie mistake. Uh, hopefully he doesn't repeat it. That could have probably cost him a win. And then Lyle Toledo and German Chick 81 round up your top four. Mario Thurston for third, get fifth. Well, it was just me this time around. Uh, not really else much else to s I'm very good at English, if you couldn't tell. Um, not much else to say. Clean race, green all the way through, which is great. 27 laps, which was a long one, but I think the 400 would be longer. We'll probably do what we did the past two seasons. Maybe make it longer than that. And go from there. Next week, or next time in Cup, I would say next week, but uh, I'm not as consistent with uploads anymore. Due to just focus some more time on online NR, but... Uh, next race is going to be Bristol Dirt. Oh, ah, man, okay. Yeah, well, I guess we're doing that. Um, well, that's going to be fun. Yeah, okay. The next NCC or, or SMOS race is going to Talladega, and we'll do that next. And we got a driver showing up for that rookie, so I better find time to pick their car. Otherwise, I'm feel bad because, yeah, that's not great. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you want to see any particular content, I know I've been dipping in some meme reviews, and I'm just not really good at that, so I might just stick to like race recaps per se. Just to, I'm not very good with the funny stuff as I used to be, but maybe just do some decent like camera footage, and clips, whatever. And I think I'm alright at that. So, but if you got any suggestions or whatever content specifically Inter Seven Three related, I'm good with that. But I got other games too. I might make time for it if suggested. And, uh, We'll go from there. Anyways, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.